So this hair is going to change into this look. I'm planning on talking with you guys about trust issues and how we can deal with them. Or in other ways, can we trust God? Because this is a Christian channel after all. And I plan on discussing this while we make this hair come alive. <laughs> Wash the hair to go. And now we can sit down and get our things for this we are going to use curlers i have these bigger sized ones i don't know if this shows you the size of it if i put it next to my hand but that's the size we have and we will use a hair dryer this is key this is so important and this is actually disgusting it is filled with hair oh my goodness it's okay all right don't worry about it don't worry about it i always start off with the front section so I have the front section and now I'm going to dry it like this. Just watch. My hair, when you touch it, it feels super hot. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. And I have these pins and they are not even the normal kind of pins. They are like, they don't close fully, but Funny enough, they work. So, deep chests. I have recently been learning about trust, specifically dealing with trust issues. So I have been reading Deuteronomy in the Bible and I noticed a pattern that God did when telling Moses what to remind the Israelites of. And you know what? He kept repeating over and over again the reminder of how God freed the Israelites and brought them to Egypt. Moses was about to die, soon it was coming toward the end of his life, and God knew that a new season was coming, the Israelites were about to get the promised land. He was just telling Moses to prepare the Israelites for what's about to happen because it is so easy to get blinded by trouble and also by a bunch of blessings because we can get so blinded when we forget to thank God, forget to realize that God is behind the things which we receive. And so God kept repeating the story of how he freed the slaves from Egypt. That's when I noticed that the reason why he is doing that so many times is because he wants to remind the people that he is a god of his promise of him being a god who has already helped them like if you think about it how do we trust our friends by experience by knowing them by having known them for a long time so god knows that the only way which he has access to the israelites is trust is by reminding them of the experiences which they have had with God. And he keeps telling the Israelites that they have seen miracles, they have seen signs, they have seen the wonders of God. When you experience another challenge in this promised land or on the way to get in this promised land, just a reminder, I did all of that, which kind of should tell you that I will do it again. He's a faithful God, that's what he's saying. Okay, let's do this other side now another side finished so basically what this reminded me of was what experiences do i have in my life where i had to experience god in order to trust him and which i can still look back on and be encouraged by in the future when i find it hard to trust god because there will be moments where my trust will be unstable and i will need that reminder at the same time the mouth is a sword so I should be careful with saying that. <laughs> Anyways, and so I thought of a really good one, a really good story that I had experienced. And that was when I was going to Spain as an exchange student and I was living with this lady and there was only one key to the house. I had already lived with her, but I went home for Christmas holidays and I was coming back and she was still on holidays. So that meant that I did not have the keys with me and we already pre-planned this and we were just trusting, we just decided to trust in God with this. But I feel like for me it was a bigger trust challenge than for her. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, and by the way, the keys were inside of the house. So the plan was that when I get in the house, I'll have the keys then and then I won't have that 
problem ever again. I was on the plane so anxious. I remember as I was getting close to arriving and I was like, how will I get into the apartment? Because what we were trusting was that when I get there, I can just ring a bell of some neighbor in the apartment and they will let me and they will open the door for me. But something that I had experienced in Spain is that um, the Spanish people don't believe you so easily, especially if you're um, Spanish has an accent and it's kind of glitchy because you're nervous. It's going to be midnight and I will be locked outside of this apartment, tired with my luggages. I was like, how will this happen? So I'm in a taxi and I'm praying to God. I keep praying like, please God, make sure I get inside of the house. Please God, make sure somehow someone will open the door for me in Jesus name, please Lord. And I am freaking out. So I decided to have a plan B. I decided to text my friend who lives on the opposite side of the city in Spain. And I asked her, can I go to her place in case nobody opens the door for me? And I sent her that message. Of course, Holy Spirit decided to um, intervene. And I just felt this conviction that I should not have sent that. And I was like, Lord, like what's, like, I feel it, I feel guilty now, like I betrayed you, like I don't trust you. And there was a song in the background, and I have not been listening to the lyrics of this song, but in that second, I just hear this one line of the song, and it is, it's a trust question. God was speaking so loud, he was like, calling me out. I just remember, uh, maybe in the car, like, God, okay, I'm so sorry, like immediately in my head. It's like, okay, God, you are so right. I do have trust issues with you. I'm so sorry. I repent. I turn away from this. I'm sorry, Lord. Let me take a step of faith and delete what I just sent. And that's when I noticed that when I sent that message to my friend, it showed that I was not trusting in God. And it showed that I had no faith in God letting me inside of that house without a key. And so I deleted that message. And I was like, okay, God, okay, I let it go. It's in your hands now. I trust you. And even if my trust is this big, you say that fate as big as a mustard seed can move mountains. So you know what? Do with my trust, fate, whatever you want. I deleted it. <laughs> the taxi arrives. I'm putting my card inside of that little machine thing. I forget the name of it. And in that second, as I put it in, I see a girl open the entrance. I take this opportunity and I just, I jolt <laughs> towards that door. Mind I say, this entrance is not that simple. It has two glass doors. So you go in through the first glass door, then you go through the next glass door. There's like a little like space, like a little room, like it's the smallest, tiniest thing ever. And it's between these two entrances weird the entrance it closes and the taxi driver is just like watching from far he's like what is that girl doing and i'm like knocking so hard on the door so the girl's here through the other door through the second entrance and the door of the second entrance is just about to close it's like this close and she hears and she turns around and she's very sweet and understanding about it and we laugh about it with the taxi driver as i pay my hands are like shaking so i go in the elevator and i have the keys to the actual door I just want the keys to the entrance and I'm crying a lot because I'm like, oh my goodness, I feel so bad, Lord. You are so gracious. God is so gracious, you guys. Here I am with trust issues and you do this for me. Oh my goodness. Yes. Anyways, okay, more comfortable. Basically, it's about having the right questions to God. Questioning rather our situations instead. How has God shown his grace to me before? How has God showed me how good he is before? And you will find yourself in so many scenarios in which God has helped you out in. Maybe you have to rethink some of the scenarios because maybe some scenarios you thought it was all thanks to your genius and it was actually God. That's my experience with trust issues. And if you have never read the Bible before and you're wondering what the ending of the Israelite story was, the ending was basically God taking them to their promised land. They did get there. And in the end, who messed everything up was the people. It wasn't God. It was people who broke God's trust, not God himself. 
although God already knew what was going to happen, but you know what I mean. And in friendships and things like that, instead of seeing it as someone breaking your trust, you can see it as another opportunity to show God's grace to others. Or you can also see it as a blessing from God, a blessing in disguise. That friendship was not meant to be, possibly, and it might be God's mighty hands behind it all. He wants us to be saved and to be helped more than we wanted for ourselves. Now we keep these in till two hours. See you soon. Okay, it's about time we take these out. I waited around two hours, I think, but honestly, it's just longer. So how I take these out is I twist them and I pull the rollers. So like this, oh my goodness. It's going to give us that curl, but I don't do it down till the end. I just pull at the very end. And it shall look like this. Twist, twist. Honestly, sometimes it's better if you just twist twice. You don't even have to see. Look at that. And this is always the fun part because it just makes the whole look it's finished. You just pull out the crazy curled looking parts and you run your hand through your hair and you can just add some hairspray to it to volumize it even more this is the final look i hope you like this video i hope that we are learning to trust more i hope to see you in my next video in the next chapter jesus loves you so much bye